Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about the 10 ways to fail. So sometimes you learn from positive things, but you can learn more from the downside, things not to do, I feel. So if you're in business at all, please stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. How's it going? How is it going? Um, by the way, a couple weeks ago, um, I had uh, no texts, but texts, SMS um, went down. There is a uh, federal registration for SMS that we filed in 23 that just... Apparently they didn't have, so they just brought our text down. So it was seven days without text. So if you sent me a text and I didn't respond um, and you're watching this, I don't hate you. I just didn't get the text. And there was no way to see that we got text. There was no way to let anybody know other than Facebook posts and everything else that we were having issues. So I'm sorry. If you tried to text me before, you start to watch the show again and you're done being mad at me. I'm sorry. Please give me a chance again. Uh, anyway, I'll get in the shameless plug later, but I wanted to start with that. Anyway, so today we are talking about the 10 ways to fail. And last week we did 10 ways to win, which I do like the idea of like doing things that send you to greatness. But there's a lot of things that send you to failure or hurt the greatness. You can do all 10 things in the ways to win and one of the fail, fail ways and negative will always be stronger than positive, right? Always be better. So having both pieces of this puzzle, I think, are really, really important. So I'm just going to dive right into it. I'm going to start with the number 10 way to fail, and it's only focusing on the now. A big thing that people do is that they're too concerned with now. They're too concerned with how do I get a job right now? How do I, um, you know, make more money right now? And if this is your first time in business, you're brand new, you don't have a customer to your name, fine, that makes sense. Now is the only thing you can focus on. But the other thing is, is that when you start a business and you focus on the not, well, I got to be really cheap right now. Like, I'll raise prices later. No, you don't. You can't. You can't double your prices later. It just won't work, even if you're way below market. So focusing on the everything instead of the now is better. Always, in every case. But too many people are focused on them right now, like the, the instant thing, and they don't see this as a business. It's the, the big piece to it is that people out there want to have a business, but they forget it's a business. A business, the company, is the thing. Window cleaning is just what you do. That sounds ridiculous, but it makes a ton of sense, I swear. Focus on the entire picture, not just now. If you are, you're too blindsided, you're too, you know, nearsighted, whatever the phrase is. <laughs> and you're, you're, you're not focused on this whole thing that you're trying to run. And you're, you're uh, stifling the business to clean windows. That makes sense. The number nine way to fail, in my opinion, in the top 10 is to run it like a job. Now, when I say that you're focused on the now, not the future, you're focused on the cleaning, not the business, it's the same thing. Understand that when you get money now, like somebody pays you, awesome. Yeah, that can go to bills, that can go to gas, that could go buy you a Rolex, that could, whatever. Whatever you want to do with it, perfect. You need money to advertise. You need to set it aside. You need to have X amount because then you're going to be putting that in your budget. But if you're only running this like a job, people out there spend all of the money up to paycheck because they know they're getting paid again. What happens is, in a job, if you're not doing the long haul, not looking at it, what happens when your car breaks down? Well, I spend all my money on the bar, so I can't, like, that is a job. The business has everything else to do. It's like owning an elephant. You have to feed it. 
You have to clean it. You have to give it medication. You have to have a pen for it. You have to have everything for it. You don't just get to ride it, right? Too many people are worried about riding the elephant instead of everything that goes off into the elephant itself. And that's fine if you're just going to like, you know, a place that has, this is the dumbest analogy ever, but you know what I'm saying, right? Focus on the thing. Don't run it like a job. Run it like a business. There's a big, big difference. On that side note, also, is when you're too focused on the dollar and everything, you know, everybody needs to get a deal and, oh, it's, it's oh, I got a, well, uh, man, I just, uh, it's worth $50 a lot. That's not a business. Like, if you drop your price by $50 just to get the job every time, or there's no rhyme or reason, or it's not actually a buying thing, or for some reason, like, if you're doing this and, and for some reason, the only reason you can get it in that pricing is to drop it, you're doing something wrong. You're not unique. You got to figure that out. But if you do that, then what do you do? You lost 50 bucks. Well, that's only 50 bucks. But I made three. But that $50, how many ads could you have done with that? Like, understand is the long term versus the now, right? Okay. <laughs> Number eight. And the top 10 ways to fail, in my opinion, is to get lost in the market. It's to not be seen. It's to be complacent. It's to only repaint once the paint starts chipping, right? If you get lost in the market and become a thing, like just a company, you're just a company. So many too many of us think that people will always buy from you. Yeah, totally. Always buy from you. Because as things happen at one point, you assume it's always going to happen. It's not true. How many customers don't come back? How many customers did you not stay relevant to? How many customers of yours ended up going somewhere else because they, they just don't really remember you or this other guy had uh, some other benefit that was better than yours and they couldn't see the value in you. Now, if that happens, which it will, that's on you because you got lost in the market. If I started a window cleaning company right now and I never advertised, I didn't get SEO, I didn't do anything. I'd be like, all right, cool. All right, phone will be ringing now. No, you're lost in the market. No one's finding you. If you're a nobody, you're a nobody. There's hundreds of companies out there that people will never call because they, they don't know about them or they don't see why they are making any sense. They're not, you know, wearing a brightly colored shirt to stand out from the other people. Make sure you're not. Because if you get lost in the market, the market's going to swallow you. There's a lot of other people. And in fact, there's always window cleaners leaving the market and always window cleaners coming into the market. Some people retire and some people start. If you're just there, you're not going to be anything. And I'll tell you that. As me doing what I'm, I've am i done, I've put in tens of thousands of orders, if not probably 100,000 orders. I would guess. And there's a lot of people out there who just don't use me anymore. They use me every single order for a very long time and then they forget about me. And that's on me. The podcast I do here is great, but you're not going to listen to this podcast forever potentially, right? Maybe I'll get busy doing something else and then you'll end up calling another rep. I won't be relevant to you, so my job is to stay relevant to everyone. That's the ever, that's the, the thing. There's nothing better than when I get a customer who I've put orders in for before. Call me and be like, hey, man, I just got an order. Like, I got back on the radar. I became relevant. I somehow broke through the noise in whatever the thing I did. And they went, oh, yeah, I ordered from Jersey. 862-312-2026. <clears throat> but there's nothing better than that, right? You can't be under the assumption that because somebody ordered with me, they'll always order from me. I would love that. That would be absolutely amazing, but it just doesn't happen. Same thing with your company. Don't get lost in the market. 
Uh, the number seven thing out of the top 10 ways to fail is buying equipment on a budget. Like if you go into buying equipment in general, but you're like, oh, my budget, it, like you've done this wrong. Like if you're in and you have a budget, then the money is dictating what you buy, not the need. And I know, I'm a rep, I sell things, and of course that's what I would say, but hear me out. This does not mean that you need to spend $20,000 on, say, a water fed, which you can, we have that. Like, pull in the system, I could spend, I could get you to 20000 with just those two items. You do not need that, because that is like a gas-powered hydro station in a 90-foot pole. Like, do you do 90-foot? If you do, great, you may need that. But most people don't. So it doesn't mean overbuying or spend more to spend more. It means go into it and say, okay, this is what I need. What's the best choice for me? This? Cool. All right. What's the price for that? Then you do it. That was the best choice. So many people go in and go, well, yeah, uh, I know that uh, I should go carbon fiber for the pole. At 649, but the M9 pole is only 479, and that's a hybrid 21 footer, the lowest grade pole we have. Don't buy that. Yeah, but it's cheaper. Or, uh, yeah, my budget's $1,000 and I'd like to get into water fed. Okay, well, don't. What do you recommend? I recommend you wait. What? I recommend you save. Like, don't go into it. Now, are there people who can get into water fed for under 1000 Yeah, but if that's the right thing for them, it just happens to be that price. Don't do that with equipment. Don't do that with trucks. Don't go, well, I really need this size vehicle or van, but I found this one on sale. I'm being smart. No, you're not. I was going to wrap it, but these magnet signs are so much cheaper. I went that. No, what are you talking about? They're completely different things. If you budgeted, well, I'm only budgeting $100 for my, my vehicle wrap. What can I get? A magnet? Okay. No. Going in and creating a fake number is wrong. What you need to do is find what's right, then you know the price. That's everything. Not just what what we sell or anything. This is trucks and logo. I mean, there's guys out there who are not buying the right shirts. They're buying cheap shirts just because they're cheaper. How do you think you're saving money? If you look cheap, there's people building equipment out of two by fours. Sorry if it's you, if you're watching this. There's not one, if anybody ever pulled up to my job and they pulled out a tool they were so proud of and it was nailed or screwed together two by fours and like floor brushes or brooms, like what? I'm paying you for what? Well, my budget was, I couldn't afford, my budget's like a hundred bucks right now and that's like $400. Then don't buy anything. Then, then you have a budget. Why are you coming into this with a budget? Anyway. As you know, that's what I do. I'm a rep, so I deal with that a lot. But people hold themselves back with this fake thing that they made. It's like, oh, man, I'd really like to be under $2,000. We got a ridiculous package right now. It's awesome. It's $600 off, and it's $29.99. Well, I was hoping to be in under $2,000. Okay? Yeah, I probably hope to be at like a dollar, but obviously that didn't happen. Well, my budget's 2000 if you have $2,000 to your name and you cannot spend $2,001 because your card won't work, it's not time to buy the equipment. Like, we make $100 a man hour. Go work a couple hours. Go work a couple more hours and you have the money. Like, if you're so tight that that really is a budget on anything you're doing, it's not time to buy that thing. You never tap yourself out. That makes no sense. Get what's right. Anyway. I've been hurt before. <clears throat> um, the number six way to fail is to have a dumpster website. I'll be honest. There's a lot of people out there who do their own sites. And maybe you're one of them. Maybe you have a really great. I've seen a lot of people who do their own sites that look amazing. I've seen a lot of other people who do their own sites and they look like they did their own sites. And it's like, well, you're sending everybody to that site and it looks like that. I instantly don't think you can do anything if you can't even get a website right. I mean, it's the same thing of not having a website. If I'm like, oh, yeah, I'd like to hire your company. What's your website? I want to take a look. Oh, we don't have a website. Cool, I'm not going to hire you. That's just a professional thing, right? 
Like if I call your business and it's, you know, say you don't have a phone for your business or something. Like I'm not going to, it's the same thing with the website. The website is the way people look at you. This is the 21st century. This is like the way. It's the way. You, I mean, you have to have a website and it can't look like a dumpster. And if you have anything to put towards that, have a company make a website for you. Monk SEO, you hear me talk about them all the time. They build websites. They build amazing websites. It's not just that it looks amazing. That's for the customer, but it has to function amazing. It has to be crawled right. It has to be shown right. It has to have all that stuff. But when people go there, they have to see what they need to see and they have to have a buying trigger. Don't just put stuff together and be like, I really like this picture. It's a, a really kind of a cool picture because the sunset. Like, neat. What does that do for buying triggers? Well, I think people are going to like it. Do you think that? Or is it a real, tr like, we're running a business and we're trying to get the most out of it. Do it the right way and don't have a dumpster for a website. Anyway, I'm getting heated this one because it fails, man. I'm, what's nothing worse than people ask me all the time for stuff. I, I, I do private coaching on, on the side. I don't talk about it too often. But with those guys that I've dealt with over years, years. They, everything that's said is not done always because we talk about it, it's like, wait, this is an option. Yeah, cool, let's try that. But those guys do things with the big picture. They look at it the right way and then choose what to do. There's so many people out there who call me and they're like, hey, I'm getting a business, how can I do this? And you tell them, they're like, oh yeah, I did that, it didn't work. I had a guy one time tell me that in his area, Facebook uh, ads, uh, door hangers, and EDDM, nothing works. Really? You live in the only place uh, in the U.S. that uh, psychology does not work. Is this Chernobyl? What, what are we doing here? So, so many people come to me and they say this stuff and we try to work on things and then it ends up being that they, they know better and that's cool, but they're just driving themselves to failure for no other reason. Anyway, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com and shameless plug of the day. You know I have uh, lost tons of customers because of our texting issue that I explained. Uh, and if, again, you're watching and I didn't text you back like a week ago, please, I'm sorry. If I don't text you, just text me again. If I don't text you, call me if this happens again. I can't believe it did happen. It's been absolutely awful. Busiest week on our history and uh, texting went down. So I'm sorry. But please let me put your orders in if I can win your heart back. Or if you've never hired or used me for anything. My number, get ready to save it. My number, got it ready? Is 862-312-312. 2026. And my name is Jersey. I like the state. You can save it that way. You don't have any other jerseys, and there are more than more than likely. Save my number. Text me. Call me if you're ready to put an order in. I'd love to do that for you. Uh, if you have questions on anything, ask. I want to be your rep. I want to earn it. And I also want to help you. Uh, also, speaking of helping you, if you have not gotten the American Window Cleaner magazine yet, what are you doing? What are you doing? So go to awcmag.com, get a subscription, 69 bucks, phenomenal. Like the magazine's all redone too. The, the, it's entertaining, it, it's, it's well done. I mean, if you're a window cleaning nerd in general, man, it's just cool. It's just cool that we have an industry like that. So go to awcmag.com, get the subscription. Okay. Back to it. But we talked about number six, which was having a dumpster of a website. That pairs in with having no SEO. And again, I beat this like a dead horse. I know. But so many companies think that what they're doing, air quotes, nothing, is somehow helping them. And there are companies who may be ranked well, and they're like, well, I don't have any SEO, and I'm ranked well for that one thing you checked. But there's hundreds of key terms. There's new businesses every day. And what happens when one business decides to get into SEO and have a company running their SEO? Now, all of a sudden, they're always found better than you. They're always found above you. 
It's so easy to get kicked out of that. Uh, SEO is an ongoing thing. It's an ongoing thing and so many people don't do it. But every single big company does. So there's something to that. I'm telling you, the most ROI you'll get, the most amount of new customers will always be from SEO. Always SEO. So the big piece to this is if you're not doing it, you're missing out on all of that. It is an ongoing thing. And again, don't hire a crap company. Don't go into it with a budget. There's nothing worse than somebody who says, hey, somebody called me. They were like, get on the page. Oh, yeah, I'm doing this thing. It's only like 30 bucks a month. I'm a... you just giving your money away. Well, it's better than nothing. Why is that your thought? Is it better than nothing or is it good? Just hire a company. I, I, again, Monk SEO, I've hired phenomenal. They did better than any company I've ever hired. And they did it in like three months. It's an ongoing forever thing. I've had companies literally steal my money. Everybody has, especially in SEO. There's so many garbage companies. Everybody says they do SEO because there's no real way to, to prove it. Results are the way to prove it. What's their track record? What are their, you know, do they have customers saying good things do they have a thousand customers that are all blown away or do they have like you know one or two reviews of people who are just bought it anyway find a good seo company and it is an expense for your company if you don't do seo you're just like oh cool well i'm hoping it's like having a, a raft in the middle of of the 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 ocean and no paddle yeah, maybe somebody will find you, hopefully, or you die. What if you have a paddle? Now I can get to somewhere. I can force this thing. I can get to where people see me. SEO. Don't tell me it's expensive. Don't tell me, oh, I'm going to do this instead. If you want to fail, perfect. If you think I'm wrong, that's cool too. I'm just some dude. I'm an idiot. Just sits and talks to myself in front of a computer. But I'm telling you, if you want to fail, have no SEO. It's the quickest way to have everybody around you pass you. The new guy pass you. The old timer pass you. SEO is by far the best thing you could possibly do. Um, anyway, uh, the number uh, four thing to, to fail is to copy somebody else. I see this so often is that somebody goes, well, you know, here's what my thing is. And it is the typical logo the typical color scheme the typical graphics people are even have websites with clip art and um getty images you know like just general um images like how if you're trying to be like everybody else how do you stand out like that like if you want to go uh hunt a sheep or a, a, we'll say a bison you wear a, a, an outfit that makes you look like a bison. If you stand in, no one notices you. If you stand out and you show up walking tall as a man, they're all running from you because they see you. Business is that way. Don't copy everybody else. None of you get anywhere. You're just copying something and then you fall into the herd. Don't do that. Number three in the top ten. This one's a hard concept to catch, but it's to advertise to yourself. Meaning like when you advertise, you go, well, I like this ad. But you didn't split test. You didn't check it with anybody. You didn't do anything. You just created a thing. And then of course you liked it. Well, that's not it. You're not your customer. So why are you advertising to you? Why would I talk about golf? I don't like golf. Yeah, but your customer does. That's who you're talking to. I always say this kind of, you know, tongue in cheek, but if if you speak Spanish, no English, speak Spanish, but I speak English and I start talking to you in English, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. I can't tell you a message. We can't communicate because you're talking a different language. I don't have to know what I talk. I need to know what you talk. Right? Don't advertise to yourself because you're not your customer. Too many people get caught in that. The number two way out of the top 10 ways to fail is not paying attention to the market. The, the, the 
I don't want to say downside, but but people get too much into this where they get so focused on what they're doing or somehow thinking that they've got it figured out. The market changes daily. Everything from the economy to the trends to the daily. And you go, well, I got this figured. Those are the old timers. The dinosaurs die. These are the people who have been doing it the same way forever. And you're like, whoa, dude, you're so wrong. Well, at one point they were right. We all know that like chick that has a haircut from like the 90s because she was the, you know, top of it when that thing happened and then it just stopped. She didn't ever change anything. It's just been the same haircut at for end. It's still like you look at it and you're like, whoa, that's from the 90s. That's from the 80s if you're even older, right? And I say that as the uh, woman, but... Men, we just, as we get older, lose our hair, and then we have to change our hairstyle. So I got gray hairs, by the way, if you're watching the video. Getting old. Anyway, don't pay attention to the market, and you sink. Everybody goes around you. The people who are innovators, the people who are watching the market, staying on trends, the people who are staying with all of that knowledge, they're staying at the top. It's the fastest way to fail when you don't look at that. Now, keep in mind the dumb concept is a windshield is like 50 times bigger than the rear view mirror so you always got to look it forward but you have to still see what's behind you that's kind of in the market watching what's around you doesn't mean oh you know window cleaning uh boba tea is popular i'm gonna close my window cleaning no no no, no, no. i'm not talking about that i'm talking about where are we in our industry what are we doing american window cleaner magazine by the way this is like a, a, a bonus, shameless plug. But you get to see people's pictures that are like live all the time. You get to see what they're doing. You get to see what they're, they're doing. All these new tools, but the new techniques and the new things and the, the dentist clothes. How many people don't know about that dentist clothes that have changed their business? I've doubled people's business with that one thing. That's mind-blowing. But if you're just there and you're like, oh, I know it. I did it. I'm winning. If you're not paying attention to the market, you're going to fail. And the number one way that you could fail, you're not going to, but you could, is you're only focused on new customers. That is by far the biggest issue in any business. Is for some reason, you're, people are so consumed with getting new customers, they forget that they have somebody who likes what they do, is happy to pay for what they do, knows and likes them, does not need a referral. They already know the quality. You have their number, address, name, email. You have all that. They're the absolute strongest and hottest lead you could possibly get. So many of you are like, yeah, well, they'll call me when they need me. What? There's not a person in the probably world, but we'll say the U.S., not one human in the U.S. over the age of two that does not know what a McDonald's is. Like it or not, eat there or not, you still know what it is. But yet, their advertising budget is astronomical. Magazines, radio, billboards, TV, everywhere. Not because they're telling people, hey, McDonald's, we serve burgers. You should try us. If you've never eaten at McDonald's, come to McDonald's. They're being relevant. They're advertising to the people that are there, that have already used them. Now, these are billion-dollar companies. If you think that as a small company, we can't at least take some concepts from them, you're, you're wrong. You'll fail faster then McDonald's will fail, right? Percentage-wise, it's easier for a small company to get bigger than a giant company to get even bigger because they could add like, you know, $100 million to their bottom line and that's like 3%. 3% to your company is like phenomenal. That, that's easy. So understand all of the ways to fail so that you don't do that. Okay. 
Seamus plug again. Please let me put your orders in. I know the text thing sucked. Uh, maybe you've never had me put your orders in. It's super easy. All you have to do is click save this cart in checkout and text me. You can even name the cart. It'll say, what do you want to name it? Name it like Jersey, put this order in. And then text me and be like, dude, dude, my, my, my uh, cart is ready. That's it. I take it from there. I would love to be your rep. It makes it easy for you. Uh, a, you help me. That's B, maybe. I could buy more hair gel or brand name Band-Aids. Or um, I can make it uh, super simple. It costs you nothing extra, by the way. Nothing extra, by the way. And uh, side note, if you're watching right now and you do put an order in, before I put it in, be like, hey, man, cart's ready. And uh, make sure we do a gift. Say the gift thing, and I will make sure there's a gift in there. I can't bring it up to you for the free gift. Not supposed to. Um, so you just got to bring it up to me and be like, dude, I want a free gift. I want this. Like the gifts are always changing. We'll get you something in there. Free shipping over $49. It costs you nothing extra. And of course, I get credit for it and I can exist. Also, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Go there. I'm going to be keep talking about that because it's amazing. I think everybody who is subscribed to that magazine has a better idea and passion than somebody who's not. Uh, and there's 50... 70,000 window cleaners in the country and there's not 70,000 subscribers. So if you want to be bigger, better than the next guy, get the subscription. Um, absorb everything you possibly can. Go to awcmag.com and get the subscription. And uh, until next week, don't fail. You won't. You're listening to a podcast. You got the magazine. You got everything else. You're not going to fail, but make sure that you're paying attention to the ways you could fail. But more importantly, go out there and be it.